What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of my hip hop review. Um, it's your boy Rash here. The album about to review tonight today is um, Two Shorts for Studio Album. I'm gonna explain that. Um, Born to Mac, released in 1987, originally. I do have the vinyl as playing in the background, but I don't actually have the album art to the vinyl and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I just thought, you know, I'd show y'all what the actual album looks like, like I always do. It only came out with one sing, well, one no noteworthy song, Freaky Tales and shit like that. Okay. Too Short, man. One of the most underrated MCs. Well, he gets respect, but not enough respect, you know. Like, the godfather of the Bay Area hip-hop scene and shit like that. I mean, a lot of people want to say he's like a fucking uh, gangster rapper. I, I don't I don't see Too Short as a gangster rapper and stuff like that. Maybe that's just me, but... Because he's more into, like, the pimp culture. He's more influenced by the pimp culture and stuff like that. So, yeah. For those who don't know who Too Short is, he is a... <clears throat> excuse me. He is a West Coast MC. Um, he was actually born. Me. My father had just recently ate. But yeah, he was he's a West Coast MC that was originally born in um LA, but he had moved to East Oakland in nineteen seventy nine, you know, to live with his mom. And so it was then there that he wanted to really get into rapping and shit. So he, while he was in high school, he hooked up with a friend by the name of Freddie B. And together, you know, they had like a very love for hip hop and whatnot. So what ended up happening was that they started recording special request like songs, you know, for like their classmates and shit like that. And so what they would do was like, they would like use their friend's name and mix it in the rap song and shit like that. And also, you know, they also made tributes to like a local pimp around the way and stuff. So, um, but it actually went crashing down when Freddie B actually got locked up and stuff like that. So, Too Short decided to go solo. And he actually hooked up with this, the owner of 75 Girls Records named Dean Hodges and shit. So, while he was there, he dropped these um three local albums and stuff like that um the first two don't stop rapping and players they were released in 1985 but at the same time too was just like 75 girls did not have like that it didn't really have a strong like It did not really have like a very strong drive and whatnot when it came to that certain aspects when it came to like promotion and stuff like that. So when it really came down to it, um, you know, Too Short was that's when like you know Too Short you know he started you know selling selling his shit out of the trunk of his car and stuff like that. So his out of the trunk of his car, and also too, um, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Um, also, too, you know, the head of 75 Girls, Dean Hodges, you know, he was trying to, he didn't really let Tusho have that much creative control with his music. So, fast forward to 1986, he dropped the raw, uncut, and X-rated album and shit. And that kind of got a little bit more heat than the um, other two albums and shit like that. So, I guess right after that, he had left 75 Girls. And he, he, with the money he earned from selling shit out the trunk of his car, he made his own label called Dangerous Music. And that's when he started working on Born to Mac. Alright, so, yeah, so with this album, you know, he had more creative control and everything like that. Um, yeah, man, like, Born to Mac, that's definitely one of the most influential West Coast albums of all time. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Um... With that album, the way it was kind of formatted was the fact that side side A basically was like the clean 
it's like the clean side and shit like that. You have the party songs and shit. Whereas side B, it has the more explicit rap songs and shit. So, I, and certain is that aspect has not, has been done in different ways and shit like that. Um, like I've mentioned before with the Ozzy Brothers, the Heat is on. How they split up like the love songs, and then you had the funky songs on the other side and shit like that. And that's something that he would have done on his next two albums, like Life is Too Short and Short Dogs in the House, which I'm definitely going to reveal in the future and stuff. So, but all, all in general, you know, all in general, you know, compared to the upcoming Too Short albums and stuff like that, this album, when it comes to like the exclusive content, is vulgar, but at the same time, it's juvenile at the same time and shit, you know, but I'm gonna get right into that. And also, I know a lot of people have like an acquired taste, like just like I see, they have an acquired taste when it comes to Too Short and stuff. So they say, oh, he's not like the best MC, which even I have to me, like when it comes to lyricism, like I won't put him out there, but at the same time, Short Dog's always been entertaining as hell when it came to this shit. And and he's a and he's a dope storyteller and stuff. So yeah. Okay, so this song, this album has eight songs. This album has eight songs and shit like that. Let's get let's get this shit started. Track number one, Party Time. Um, Party Time. That was a pretty okay song, you know. Self-explanatory. It was just a party. It was just a party anthem and stuff like that. And you know, what's interesting about that beat was just like, when it came to like the production, oh, speaking of production, I forgot to mention. Produced Too Short and um, I believe Todd Bohannon produced his whole album and stuff like that. So just thought I mentioned that. And with the production, it introduced like a very different sound when it comes to like a lot of West Coast hip hop because when it when you would compare an album like this to maybe like Straight Outta Compton, Straight Outta Compton's production was like a lot more drum heavy and shit like that. Whereas with this one, it's more bass 808s driven, bass on 808s driven and shit. And that sound pretty much influenced what will become like a bay, the Bay Area and stuff, you know. Like cats like Mac Dre, Rest in Peace to Mac Dre and E-40 would incorporate like influence from the sound and shit. Alright. So as as I was saying, Party Time is a very straightforward song. Um I wouldn't I would not have started the album with Party Time. That's me personally, but it is what it is, you know. Um track number two, Mac Attack. Very dope song. That song was like a pretty much like a braggadocio record and stuff. Um Oh, I meant Ted Bohan, excuse me. Yeah, it just too short, you know, introducing himself and stuff like that. You know, some of my favorite lines he was saying was, my name is Too Short Baby, I don't play that jack. One young tender lost all hope. Slapped her in the face with my donkey rope. Another young sucker tried to front my staff. Saw, saw it on his face when they broke him in half. It was dangerous cool and I tell you it's true. Everything they say about Playboy too, like, yeah, he was just going in on that song and stuff like that. Very dope, very dope song. Um, next track we got is um Playboy Short Two. One thing you like about Too Short, which I've looked up, was that a lot of the songs, like he's done, I think for this album and I believe Life is Too Short as well. He pretty much like recycled some older song, you know, from his first three album from the 75 Girls days and shit like that. So, I believe this was a single for one of the early albums and stuff. Again, it's another braggadocio song and stuff. Um, This one's pretty okay. You know, I wasn't really too, too big on this one and shit, so. Track number four, You Know What I Mean. Um, Definitely a very, very, very dope song. Um, Another thing like I mentioned, I, I want to mention too when it comes to Too Short, you know, 
a lot of people want to always say that he's always known for the sex raps and shit like that, which is his signature. But when it comes to like the conscious songs, I feel like he does not always get the right praise for that as well and stuff, you know. And I'll discuss more on that when I come in the future. But this was like one of his first four ways when it came to that. Um, it's talking, he's warning like people not to get involved with street violence, not to get involved with street violence and the drug life and stuff like that, you know, just find a positive outlook and shit, so, that's one thing I got for that, for that song, very, very dope song and shit like that, um, then we go to the freaky side and we get to fucking Freak Tales, which, that's a song right there, it's definitely one of his signature songs, the song that really... The song that really put him out there when it came to like you know notoriety and shit you know um legendary song the song ran for like nine minutes and stuff and but a hip-hop song in 1987 to run for almost 10 minutes very like it was very like ahead of its time like nigga was rapping about all of his like sexual escapades and stuff like that um, some of the lines and stuff like he was saying was, I met this tender, her name was Lori, an X-rated movie wouldn't tell her story. She had a twin sister, her name was Lisa, and just like Lori, she's a real dick pleaser. My girlfriend's name was Michelle, her booty was bigger than a tail on a whale. <laughs> When I freaked Michelle, I freaked her well. Her pussy got hotter than the flames in hell and shit. Like, like, this whole fucking song, like, I can't imagine this song being released today. Because can you imagine, like, the fucking Me Too movement being all over this whole fucking album and stuff like that. And then attacking Freaky Tales as well. And a lot of people want to say that this was really the first dirty rap song. Like, it pretty much really influenced everybody from 2 Live Crew to Snoop and shit like that and stuff. So, yeah, this song, this, this fucking, um, and also with this fucking album and shit like that, it really, it really introduced a very new, diverse sound when it comes to West Coast Hip Hop. And that's something that's very interesting and whatnot, you know, so... Yeah, man, fucking Freaky Tales, man. It's one of the best songs. Probably the best song off this album, excuse me. Yeah. Track number six, um, Dope Fiend Beat. Again, like, this is possibly my second favorite song off this album, you know. It's too short, you know, on his explicit best and shit like that. Um, With this song, you know, with this album, I forgot to mention as well. Like, this was the first album where he used the word, like, biatch. You heard the word, like, biatch and shit like that, you know? And, yeah, this was really the first time you heard that shit. So, like, all this shit, like, you know, Snoop Dogg, he incorporated it and stuff like that, you know? So, I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Um, Don't Feed Beat, very cool song, you know? This exclusive best. Like, some of the lines I want to say was... You work fast food and you think you're rich. You see, my game don't stop when it's on the one. I love to see you when you work that tongue. Getting real busy in the back of the car and shit, you know. Just going in like so fucking descriptive, man. I tell you. Um, track number seven, Little Girls. Pretty fucking controversial track. Well, this whole album was controversial, but... Well, this whole song was talking about how... If you like living, like, if you live in the projects, you know how, like, you know, certain girls, they like to dress up older and stuff like that. Like, say, like, a girl's 13 and she'll dress up and act like she's, like, 24 and stuff. And the fellas would basically be falling into that because they just get so captivated by how she looks and stuff. So, with this song right here, Too Short was basically warning people, like, to be careful and it. And have a close eye when it came to shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Definitely reminds me of Boogie Down Productions, 13 and Good Off the Sex and Violence album and whatnot. So, and that song itself was it's a very controversial song today. When you when you're talking about how Karis One, you know, had his comments to say about Africa Bambada and shit, which that's another story for a different day. Um, 
um, with that being said, you know, Little Girls, that's definitely, it's not one, like, one of my favorite tracks, but I feel like it falls into, you know, it falls into, like, the conscious tracks when it came to Too Short. Give me one second. Sorry about that. I had to flip, flip the side and shit like that. So, yeah, Little Girl, that's definitely another one of, like, those songs that, from um, Too Short, that gets swept under the radio when it comes to, like, its conscious shit, you know? And the last song is basically the Universal Mix. Oh, Little Girls featured this MC name, MC Ja, by the way. And track number eight. It is the universal mix and shit like that, which is basically just DJ scratching. So, yeah. Okay, so that's all the songs off this album. Um, overall, this is a very good album, very good album. His one of his most influential albums. Um, but there's some things I do have to get upon and shit like that, you know. To me, I felt like, you know, certain songs were longer than it should be when it came to this album. Um, especially when it came to, like, the first couple tracks, like, Party Time and um, Playboy Short. Which, good song, but I would, like, come down to maybe, like, a minute, two minutes and whatnot. Um, also, I just felt like, you know, you know, also, it's just like, you know, when it comes to this album and shit like that, it's just how fucking sonically, how it sounded, especially from 1987 and shit. So, very good album. And Too Short Storytelling was definitely good. It would get better over the couple of albums and stuff, but with this album, this is the album I would just say is for diehard Too Short fans, you know? Like... A lot of people want to say that Life is Too Short is his best album, which, that's a very good album as well. I'm going to say my thoughts on that um, when I review it. I don't know exactly when I'll review that album again, but... Yeah, but my favorite Too Short albums are like some of his latter ones and shit, which I'll get into and stuff, so... Yeah, and just to let you guys know, I actually got the... I believe I got the 1988 reissue, the Jive reissue. No, scratch that, 1989 Jive reissue because I forgot to mention too, like this album sold 50,000 units. You know, you know, Tucho sold this album independently, 50,000 units, that it caught the attention of Barry Wise. And Barry Wise at the time was, I believe, the I think CEO or president of Jive Records. You know, the same record label where Tribe Called Quest was and stuff like that. And, you know, he wanted Too Short to sign him for a major label deal. Now, Life Is Too Short, that was his first official album on Jive Records. But this was re-released that same year, like, off, captivating off the success of Life Is Too Short. So, I always like when certain, like, artists re we released like independent albums or shit like that that they've done um like you know before like they get all the popular and stuff like that you know especially when like the weekend we released it, all of his first three projects and put it as trilogy and shit yeah very very dope album love this album and stuff and yeah like like i said before this album would not be made today and stuff like this is sutro that some of his most dirtiest and it's, this is some of his, some two shows the most dirtiest and stuff like that, you know. Very good album, you know. Like I said before, you know, I would recommend this, you know, it's Die Hard Too Short fans. Stay tuned for my review on Life is Too Short. And it's your boy Reg. Peace.